people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another very, very exciting FNAF news video. In today's video, we got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, ranging from brand new merchandise products, especially from Sanchi, they finally made a comeback. We got more updates on the upcoming FNAF movie, a whole bunch of hex news from Daco, and even our first look at gameplay of Help Wanted 2. So if you're excited, let's not waste any more time here in this intro, scroll down, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more FNAF news. Let's kick this video off by talking about a brand new book release. That is right, the third volume of the Fazbear Frights graphic novel collection is now finally out. And something actually pretty fascinating about this book release is that one of the artists, Diana, actually released some behind the scenes, showing off a whole bunch of reference sheets used for the characters in the book. Here, of course, we've got Toby, the main character of Hide and Seek, and then we've got Shadow Bonnie, who looks absolutely terrifying in this depiction. We got other characters like Toby's dad, as well as Dan, Connor, and lastly, Tabitha. Moving on now to merchandise, it's not a FNAF news video, Video unless we got a whole bunch of merchandise coming from Hot Topic, and shocker, this time we do. First up, they released these brand new stickers of Glamrock Freddy, and also the moon from Security Breach. And then we just got a whole bunch of jewelry themed around the daycare attendant. Here we got this bracelet, some earrings, a necklace, as well as a reversible beanie featuring the sun and the moon. And lastly, we got a stereotypical Freddy Fazbear's pizza bracelet, as well as a bestie necklace featuring Freddy and Bonnie. Moving on now to Sanchi, they just released brand new plushies of Glamrock Freddy and Glamrock Rock Chica. This is the first time since these original plushies that Sanchi's made FNAF plushies. And of course, just like the original launch, these guys look exactly like what the plushies look like in the game. They even come with collector's pins of Freddy and Chica. And speaking of pins, they also officially released those camera pins as well as the ticket pins. All these new products are available right now on Sanchi's website. And now moving from one plushie brand to another, we got a whole bunch of updates on Daco's Hex. First up, this is now the updated design for their upcoming Mango plushie. Daco did mention that the final version of Mango will not have so many wires around their face, as well as the face of the endoskeleton. And because Mango is such a big plushie and they come with so many accessories, they will be delivered in a gigantic display box, actually with art illustrated by Turntail as well as Stupid Butterfly. And then we got our first look at the Withered Chica plushie, though keep in mind this is still a prototype. Personally, I think this plushie looks almost spot on already. The body looks absolutely fantastic. The mouth actually looks surprisingly well for a plushie, though I do hope they do change the eye. Eyes. One of Chica's most, you know, prominent features of her face are her giant eye sockets, so I hope they play into that. And then Daco revealed a glow-in-the-dark shadow Bonnie hoodie being illustrated by Turntail. There's a whole bunch of writing and Easter eggs on this plushie, most prominently, at least my favorite, is the RWQ FSF. ASXC going down the sleeve, even still to this day, that name's a pain in the butt to say. You've got a creepy arcade machine, a clock going from 12 to 6, the Shadow Bonnie paper plate doll. This hoodie looks fantastic, Daco did also mention a Shadow Bonnie plush will be released alongside this hoodie. We got an updated look at the upcoming Withered Bonnie plushie, this guy looks absolutely fantastic. Daco did mention, however, they still are trying to make the face flush a bit better to the rest of the head. We've still yet to see Withered Freddy's plushie, and that's because Daco just straight up admitted he doesn't look the best right now, so he's gonna wait for a better looking prototype. Though he did mention some other specifics I've got written down here. First up, sitting versions of the toy plushies are on the way. He also mentioned that the sister location characters will likely get plushies next instead of the Nightmare animatronics from FNAF 4. And for other plushies, he sparked interest in making a Nightmare Own plushie, the Glamrock animatronics, as well as Vanny from Security Breach. And that's all the merchandise news. I'd love to know what are your thoughts so far on the Sanchi news, the Hex news. Moving on now to the FNAF movie. We got a brand new FNAF movie book being released next year, and that book is titled The Art and Making of the Five Nights at Freddy's Movie. It comes out on August 20th, 2024, and the description goes, in this large jacketed hardcover book, perfect for home libraries and coffee tables, readers will get an inside look at the filmmaking process from animatronic designs and prototypes, to behind-the-scenes photographs and storyboards. With close looks at design for costumes, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, and more, this deluxe guide is a must-have for any Freddy fan. Honestly, this this is a dream come true, especially for a film that's been, you know, so long in development like the FNAF movie. Getting early designs for the animatronic, the costumes, you know, the storyboards, the outlining of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, that's all gonna be fantastic. And last FNAF news video, we took a look at the animatronics on display at the Halloween Horror Nights, where we did get a few more photos from them. Courtesy of discussing films over on Twitter, first up we got main man Freddy Fazbear. Next up we've got Bonnie, and you may notice this time Bonnie is actually holding his guitar. Last time 
time he was not with his guitar so it's pretty interesting that they finally put it up on display we got more photos of chica as well as her mr cupcake prop and lastly some more up close shots of foxy the pirate now something pretty amusing was that jason blum the ceo of blumhouse who are making the fnaf movie was actually at halloween horror nights and his hand was dangerously close to touching chica's speaking of jason he's actually going to be revealing some exclusive fnaf movie news next month we got the news that he will be attending blumfest at this year's new york comic-con on thursday october the 12th and this is the description for blumfest it says blum is in the house blumhouse founder and reigning king of horror jason blum the producer of megan the halloween trilogy and the black phone reveals exclusive details about the company's terrifying upcoming films including five nights at freddy's night swim and totally killer i really do hope the interview's not like yeah we really took our time with this film and I think it's pretty scary. Now, I'm not sure if he's gonna be like, oh yeah, we're already working on a sequel to FNAF movie. It's gonna be great, but at least some interesting news would be appreciated. Lastly, for news, of course, we gotta talk about Help Wanted 2 because we finally got our first look at gameplay for the game. Yesterday, Daco tweeted out, I have a surprise for you tomorrow with a bunny emoji, a bear emoji, and a moon emoji. Now, immediately, people were like, hey, wait a second, those three emojis... They line up with the three levels people got to play at PAX. Bonkabon level, the Funtime Freddy level, and the Carousel level with the moon. And sure enough, that's exactly what Docco released today. Now, I am going to leave Docco's full video link down below, but I will skim through it just here for this video. First up, he played the Breaker Room with Funtime Freddy. Oh my god, he's there! There he is! There's Funtime Freddy! So in this level, Funtime Freddy's gonna make his way towards you, and you gotta use this megaphone to shoot him and blast him back into his default position. So down below you, off to your left, you have these levers you have to pull it into a correct order which Daco is failing to do so here and if you do it in the correct order it's going to start to light up these dials over here you can see this one is starting to go okay. there it goes this pretty moving you can see him right over here just barely you can see his eyes you shoot him and he goes back into uh his default position and now this is charging up now now that he's got the levers in the correct position here you can see freddy in another position you stay there you can hear his voice lines play as well as he gets closer to you. There you go. Oh, that is so creepy. That is Look so at creepy. that. So many awesome renders of Funtime Freddy here. He's absolutely terrifying in the dark. Look at that, dude. This is going to be insane. This is Daco actually beating the level now. You can see Freddy's very close, but he's right there. And there we go. The whole room lights up. You can see Funtime Freddy in a really jolly pose in the background. You can see the entirety of the, of the, uh, the breaker room. Look at that. Just an awesome level all around. And actually, at the end of all the levels, you did get a jump scare. This is what Funtime Freddy's jump scare looks like. See, he throws Bonbon bon towards you, and then he jumps in. Next up, we've got the Bonkabon bon level, which, interestingly enough, actually takes place in the West Arcade of the Mega Pizzaplex. You can see right here, you've got a giant display ahead of you. And it's going to be very chaotic, okay, okay. but characters pop out. Okay. There's Bonnet. Bon Bon, Helpy, the, the plush baby bops out as well. You just gotta go super fast and bop as many as you can. <laughs> you can see Helpy's hat actually snaps if you hit him. Look at that, you like beat them. It's actually really upsetting. Look at that, <laughs> he's so sad. You can knock out the lights. And as you can see, as the levels progress, oh the room gets darker, more characters start to pop out, their eyes glow up as they pop out. Here we go. Oh, no. Look at how many there are. Daco can barely keep up. So there's three levels. That was the second level. And now this is the third and final level where things are just complete chaos. Just have a look. Look at that. They like fill up the holes completely, dude. It's crazy. I actually don't think Daco beats this one. Yeah, look at that. It was absolute chaos, man. And there you even saw plush babies jump scare. And the third and final level is probably the most confusing. This is, of course, the carousel level oh, with the moon yeah, daycare yeah, attendant. So there's a display board in front of you, and there's a whole bunch of puzzles and dials and wires you gotta connect and okay. stuff. Obviously, nothing like that, Docker. That was... What was that, dude? And as you're doing this... There he is. The moon is circling around the entire carousel on the attraction. When you shine him... He covers his eyes, he goes away. Only for a little bit, though. He will come back. And whenever you fix a section of the carousel, there's three sections. It starts to turn. <laughs> and he moves around. 
Look at that. He's just going for a ride. He's pretty happy. He's enjoying the ride. It looks absolutely terrifying. And as you can see, since that section one is done, there's now a new section that Dako has to do. And still, as you do the sections, he's going to start to get closer right there. You can see just how close he gets. Finish the second puzzle. The other section of the carousel starts to spin as well. So it's even more difficult to spot the moon now. You can see now he's super, super close. If you mess up just the tiniest bit, he's going to get you. And then towards the end of the segment, once you're all done, you have to survive a full minute against the moon. So Darko fixes the level. And then there's one minute until reset. Now, admittedly, Darko kind of throws for content and he does not survive but all you have to do is just start to look around try and find the moon survive for one minute until that reset takes place I'm dead. Guys, you can I'm see dead. look at the, look at the absolute chaos man oh if there's one word to describe help wanted two it's chaos there is so much going on and lastly for help wanted two news this is the jump scare for the moon, moon! And I believe it's reused from the Eclipse jump scare in Ruin. But that is all the gameplay for Help Wanted 2. And the game looks just absolutely insane. Like I said, graphically, it might be the best we've ever seen for now. The animations look super smooth as well. The actual graphics, like I said, fantastic. Blows me away. The levels themselves look really fun, really stressful, really terrifying. So I absolutely, absolutely cannot wait to play it. The question is though... How much longer until we can play Help Wanted 2? Well, actually, according to a lot of people who went to the PAX booth, a lot of employees said it's planned for December. That makes a whole lot of sense. It's still a few months away. It's still late 2023, like Stuart said in the teaser video. And of course, it's around the holiday season, so people get the game for Christmas. If you get a VR headset for Christmas, well, now you got a brand new game to play. But well, that is going to do it for all this FNAF news. Tell me what are your thoughts so far on Help Wanted 2. Here's to hoping we get an actual like gameplay trailer pretty soon. I really cannot wait to see what Steel has left in store for Help Wanted 2. It's going to be a crazy, crazy time. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.